15. Assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of salts in contact with the solution containing a common ion. And then show that the changes in the initial concentrations of the common ion can be neglected. And then we have zinc 2 hydroxide, ZnOH2 solid, that's in a solution that's buffered at a pH of 11.45. Okay. Now, this question would not be able to be done without the solubility product, the KSP, of the solid. So ZnOH2's KSP is roughly 3.0 uh, times 10 to the negative 17th. I believe that this one, um, I looked for it through a couple of sources. Uh, I looked through, I think, five different textbooks because this uh, KSP wasn't matching up. So I'm going to take this value. Uh, I hope you don't mind with that. But um, your textbook might have a different value than this number. Uh, basically, all the textbooks had a different number for this one. So we're just going to go with 3.0 times 10 to the negative 17th. Okay. Now, what uh, would the KSP be without a balanced equation? So let's go for it. Remember, these solids are dissolving, dissolution. So Zn, OH2. That's a solid, and this is coming to equilibrium with the two ions that it's going to be dissolving into, right? So the break between the zinc and the OH is between the zinc and the hydroxide. So I have Zn, Zn plus hydroxide. What are the charges in the upper hand corner? We can figure those out, remember, by you could take the subscripts and crisscross them back up, right? There is one zinc and two hydroxides. So this one crisscrosses up to the OH, telling me that the OH was a negative one charge. The two crisscrosses up to the zinc, telling me that the zinc was a plus two charge. So I have zinc being a plus two and the hydroxide being a minus one. And then since they're charges, they're aqueous. And now I just have to make sure that I balance, but there's one zinc, one zinc, but two hydroxides, so I have to put a two in front of here, and let's just throw this equation over on this side for now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the equation to do the general KSP formula. The general KSP formula comes from this, right? It's just the KSP equals the products raised to the coefficients. So KSP, equals the concentration of zinc plus two times hydroxide OH minus. But just make sure that you're raising them to the coefficients. There was one zinc, so I don't really have to raise that one, but there's two hydroxides, so I have to raise the hydroxide to a two. The KSP value we got was 3.0 times 10 to the negative 17th, but the thing is, I don't know what these values are. That's where I start using variables. But this is the point of the question where you look to see if you have a common ion. And this is where we're going to start using the numbers that they gave us. They did tell us that we had a pH of 11.45. Can I take this pH value and somehow turn it into one of these ions? This is coming back from the last chapter. Which one is it, guys? Can I take a pH and turn it into the Zn plus 2 concentration? Or can I take a pH and turn it into a hydroxide concentration? Yeah, definitely the hydroxide one, right? Because this is pure base concentration. I can go from a pH to a pOH. And then from there, I could finally get my OH minus concentration. So let's go for it. Let's first grab this formula, and I guess I'll do it, I guess we'll do it over here, and then we'll see where we place it. The pH they told us was 11.45, so if I just wanted to solve for pOH, right, I would just have to minus 11.45 on both sides. Okay, so that's step number one. pOH would equal 14 minus 
So I get 2.55. Great. Now let's convert to the OH minus. And remember, oh, what happened there? The OH minus concentration is 10 to the negative pH. So it's just going to be 10 to the negative 2.55. And I'll have the OH minus concentration. So 10 raised to the negative 2.55. I get 2.8, we'll say 2.818 times 10 to the negative third molarity. Okay. Now this was what you, your solution was already in. So this molarity, this OH molarity is your initial molarity. Not the molarity that you're dissolving. So if you're starting off with an initial, especially if you're starting off with the common ion, we have to do an ice table. So here we go, ICE. And maybe I'll probably, oh boy. I love it when I just cut right through it. Let's see. Can I grab that little end of the eye? Oh boy. This is how coordinated I am. Oh my goodness, we'll just do that. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so initial OH minus concentration is this value, 2.818 times 10 to the negative third. Did we start off with any initial zinc? Nope, so zero. Remember, these are solids. So nobody cares about this side of the ice table, so don't worry about that. Um, C stands for change, the amount that this concentration is going to change. That we don't know, but we usually just use this as a plus because I started off with nothing. And then we just fill it with X's. So this would be plus X because I only had one of them. And this would be plus 2X. They have to coordinate with their coefficients. And then equilibrium, you just bring the initial and the change together. So 0 plus x is x, and then 2.818 times 10 to the negative third plus 2x. And these are now going to be the concentration values that we use for our KSP. So the zinc is going to be x, and the OH is going to be 2.818 times 10 to the negative third plus 2x. However, if we leave the plus 2x in there, that change, we're going to have to do the quadratic. And we try to not do that as much as we can. So we try to assume in the beginning. And the assumption is, is that this starting value is going to be way larger than the change that we're going to have because the KSP is so small. So I can neglect this plus 2x. But then when I go back and I actually find my equilibrium values, I do have to pl plug in that x for it. OK, so now pause the video because I'm just going to get rid of this math. Just write it down if you need to. Goodbye. And maybe I'll just get rid of this as well. OK, so we have 3.0 times 10 to the negative 17th equals This squared, this is x, and this is 2.818 times 10 to the negative 3. Let's do that squared. 3.0 times 10 to the negative 17th equals 2.818 times 10 to the negative 3rd squared. Right? Yeah. So I get 7.9411 times 10 to the negative 6. That's times by x. And now we're just going to solve for x, divide by both sides by that number. I know I shouldn't really be rounding, but um, I don't want to write, you know, so many numbers on the page for you guys. So this cancels. And now we have x equals, drum roll please, 3 times 10 to the negative 17th divided by 7.94 times 10 to the negative 6th. We get 3.4. Uh, I guess we'll do four sig figs. 3.778 times 10 
to the negative 12th. You see how small that number is? So the change is not that great. Now we just have to find the calculations for the concentrations. So there's two of them, zinc plus two and the OH minus. If I just had to plug this all the way over here, just remember that the zinc is the X and the OH is the 2.818 times 10 to the negative three plus two X. So this would be just the X value, 3.778 times 10 to the negative 12th molarity. And then this would be whatever this is, plug in that X value. It shouldn't change that much, 2.818 times 10 to the negative third plus two times 3.778 times 10 to the negative 12. Yeah, it doesn't change at all. So 2.818 times 10 to the negative third molarity. And those are your two answers. Those are your concentrations of your solute species. So good question. I think that's the end for this number. Ooh, what'd you guys think? Now, before we end, I just want to show you how we can neglect that change and why it's, you know, acceptable is because we just quickly do the 5% rule. And what you do is you take your X value, so 3.778 times 10 to the negative 12th, and you divide it by your initial concentration. You're just basically seeing how much actually dissociated from that initial or how much changed from the initial times it by 100 because that has to be a uh, percent. So 3.778 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 2.818 times 10 to the negative third times 100. And I get, I don't even get 1%. <laughs> so the 5% rule is basically if the answer to this is five or less, which it is, um, you're able to neglect that X. And that's why we just were able to go straight to the answer. All right. Hopefully this helped you out. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you guys are having a great day out there. Keep studying hard and I will talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye.